The Antarctic ice shelf is vulnerable to a chain reaction collapse. Here's what you need to know. As melting ice in Antarctica exposes land beneath it, the chain of processes set off may be capable of causing the sheet to collapse, according to a study in Nature Geoscience. Researchers looked at Earth 13 to 17 million years ago, when carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and global temperatures reached levels similar to those experienced by the end of this century, and said when ice sheets melt, the exposed land beneath is less reflective, so local temperatures become warmer. This can drastically alter weather patterns because Antarctic winds usually blow from the continent out to the sea, but if the continent warms up, that could be reversed, with winds blowing from the cooler sea to the warmer land. That would bring additional rainfall to the Antarctic, which in turn would cause more fresh water to run into the sea, according to a University of Exeter news release on Eureka Alert. Finally, because fresh water is less dense than salt water, it is less likely to sink and circulate, which means warmer water simply sits on top of the ocean, causing more warming. In line with that explanation, the study found that reductions in the area covered by ice sheets was far more important in creating further ice loss than reductions in ice volume, because the more land is exposed, the more warming processes are encouraged. The study's lead author explained that, essentially, if more land is exposed in Antarctica, it becomes harder for a large ice sheet to reform. However, when this happened previously, it's possible that favorable orbital positions prevented a collapse. Earth's positioning relative to the sun caused the ice sheet to advance and retreat, and this altered weather patterns, and helped preserve, rather than melt, the ice in that instance. There is, of course, widespread acceptance that man-made climate change is driving the initial warming in Antarctica, with the National Snow and Ice Data Center in the U.S. noting that the Antarctic Peninsula, which juts out into warmer waters north of Antarctica, has warmed 2.5 degrees Celsius, or 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit, since 1950. And National Geographic adding that since the early 1990s, Antarctica has lost roughly 3 trillion tons of ice. Earlier this year, though, the University of Reading released the most detailed ever study forecasting the vulnerability of ice shelves surrounding Antarctica to climate change, and it found that a shocking 34% of the area of all Antarctic ice shelves would be at risk of destabilization under 4 degrees Celsius, or 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit, of global warming. These concerns are mirrored in the Arctic, where last summer the National Snow and Ice Data Center found sea ice shrank to its second lowest ever extent in the 42-year satellite record. As mentioned earlier, that's bad news for the climate, as sea ice helps cool the planet, but the NCIDC added the detail that 80% of the sunlight that strikes sea ice is reflected back into space. At the time, the NSIDC's director, Mark Serez, explained melting ice was caused in part by 100-degree Fahrenheit heat waves in Siberia that occurred in June and massive wildfires in the western United States. Either way, though, the diminishing sea ice is driving polar bears, which depend on it as a platform for hunting seals, to extinction. It also threatens animals like walruses and seals, which use it as a platform for resting and giving birth. NSIDC Director Serez told CNN that if the current trajectory continues, there will eventually be no Arctic sea ice in the later summer. Increasingly, studies are demonstrating that these warming and melting processes can have counterintuitive effects too, with NASA saying last year that not only is human-caused climate change rapidly melting Arctic ice and disrupting ocean currents, it could make Western Europe significantly cooler. The study outlined that the Beaufort Gyre is a current that previously kept the Arctic waters cold and protected sea ice. However, the glut of cold fresh water is making the gyre spin stronger and faster, and the natural reversal of the spin's direction has not happened for over 10 years. Researchers say that if the westerly wind guiding the current should reverse its direction, the cold water buildup could be unleashed all at once. The cold tide may well slow down the Atlantic currents that bring warmth to Western Europe. NASA said in its news release that disruptions to the Gulf Stream would have a negative impact on ocean life and the communities that depend on them. Of course, not all of this is our fault, just most of it. An underwater heat blob from the Atlantic, for instance, has been found to be exacerbating the warming of the Arctic Ocean and contributing to the rapid disappearance of Arctic sea ice, according to a study published in the journal Nature Climate Change last year. The study showed that the amount of heat transported to the Nordic seas and Arctic Ocean by ocean currents has increased dramatically since 2001. The pole word heat transport has been implicated as one possible cause of the warming of the Arctic Ocean and the rapid disappearance of Arctic sea ice. As warm surface waters travel to regions further north, they lose heat and gain in salinity as fresh water evaporates. 
When warm Atlantic water reaches the Arctic, it sinks to form a heat blob because the cool fresh water from the Arctic is less salty and thus more buoyant. This facilitates the formation of sea ice over the ocean. However, the increased transmission of heat to northern latitudes could hinder sea ice formation. On a similar note, a more recent study in August found that climate change isn't the only factor melting the giant Thwaites Glacier. Rather, the Earth itself may also be warming the massive block of Antarctic ice, which is colloquially known as the Doomsday Glacier. According to the study, the crust beneath West Antarctica is between 10 to 15 miles, or 17 to 25 kilometers thick, compared with around 25 miles, or 40 kilometers in the east, and this means that substantially more heat from below can access the west than can access the east. The researchers found that a geothermal heat flow of up to 150 milliwatts per square meter can occur beneath the Thwaites Glacier, according to the study's lead author. Ultimately, the temperature on the underside of the glacier is dependent on a number of factors, including whether the ground consists of compact, solid rock, or of meters of water-saturated sediment, according to one of the study's co-authors, Karsten Gohl. It was already known that hidden rivers of relatively warm seawater cutting across the glacier's underbelly, plus the effects of unmitigated climate change, which warms both the air and the ocean, had caused massive melting. However, Gohl, a geophysicist, says that in addition to these factors, large amounts of geothermal heat can lead, among other things, to the bottom of the glacier bed no longer freezing completely or to a constant film of water forming on its surface. Both of these effects can ultimately result in the ice masses sliding more easily over the ground and into the ocean, causing rises in water levels. Of course, this does nothing to absolve us of blame or responsibility and still leaves us with a problem to solve. Alongside the UN's net carbon reduction targets, some people think at this point the situation is so dire that it might require attempts to geoengineer the climate back to a less dangerous state. For instance, scientists in 2019 suggested plans to save Antarctic glaciers and Arctic sea ice by refreezing them. In order to prevent sea level rises that would leave many coastal cities such as New York underwater, a study published in Science Advances proposed using 12,000 wind turbines to pump seawater to the surface, turn it into artificial snow, and then pump it onto two glaciers on the West Antarctic coast. According to study co-author Anders Leverman, it would take 7.4 trillion tons of snow over a 10-year period to result in a 2-centimeter drop in sea level, though the artificial snow would weigh the glaciers down and improve stability. As other research suggests, warm water currents may be melting the glaciers from the bottom up, there was also an idea to construct giant sills or underwater mounds to prevent the water from seeping under the ice shelves. While a separate Arctic ice management strategy called for the use of wind-powered pumps to spray water to the surface of sea ice, where it would freeze and thicken the ice cap. For the moment, of course, as these and a number of other geoengineering efforts attempt to get off the ground, it's likely that carbon reduction efforts are our best bet, as the UN's latest climate report focused on. The only other alternative to that is basically watching large parts of our planet fall apart, as we did with the world's largest iceberg through 2020. In April, satellite images showed iceberg A68 lost a 175 square kilometer chunk of ice, which is called iceberg A68C, between satellite passes on April 21st and April 22nd. When it first calved from Antarctica's Larsen Sea ice shelf, iceberg A68 was nearly 6,000 square kilometers in size, according to images from the Copernicus Sentinel-1 mission. But by April 2022, it was around 5,000 square kilometers, almost four times the size of Greater London, or roughly half the size of the islands of Hawaii or Cyprus. The giant chunk of ice was at that point 160 kilometers long, but only a couple of hundred meters thick, making it remarkably thin for an iceberg of its size. Iceberg A68 broke off from the Larsen Ice Shelf in July of 2017, losing a small piece called Iceberg A68B shortly after it calved. Iceberg A68 then remained largely intact for three years as it drifted past the Antarctic Peninsula in the Weddell Sea. Currents in the Southern Ocean began pushing the iceberg past the South Orkney Islands. Here's what happened next. It comes with a twist at the end. The world's biggest iceberg is headed straight toward an island in the South Atlantic and has the potential to cause significant damage to wildlife should it become grounded nearby. Based on currents and weather conditions, the iceberg, designated A68A, is poised to hit the island of South Georgia this month, according to the Royal Navy. South Georgia is a wildlife haven and part of the UK Overseas Territory of South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands. It is located in the remote Southern Atlantic Ocean about 800 miles, or more than 1,000 kilometers southeast of 
the Falkland Islands. Iceberg A86A is roughly the size of Delaware, while South Georgia is roughly the size of Rhode Island. The BBC reports that because the iceberg is relatively thin, its cliffs rise 30 meters above the surface, while its keel is estimated to be only 200 meters deep. There is a danger it could become grounded just offshore, taking possibly 10 years to melt. This would devastate the local ecosystem as it would force animals such as king penguins and elephant seals to travel much greater distances to find food. The iceberg would also crush wildlife on the seafloor where it parks, causing damage that would take a long time for the ecosystem to bounce back from. But it's not all bad news, according to the British Antarctic Survey. Once the iceberg melts, it will release nutrients from atmospheric dust and volcanic eruptions that have accumulated over thousands of years. This will fertilize ocean plankton in the area, and this boost will then rise up the food chain to krill and larger animals. Experts are observing the remainder of iceberg A68A which has shattered into four city-sized chunks, according to the U.S. National Ice Center. The main iceberg, which is still 2,606 square kilometers, or about 1,000 square miles large, is now floating away from the island of South Georgia. Iceberg A68A was one of the largest icebergs ever recorded in the satellite record when it broke off from the Larsen Sea ice shelf in Antarctica in July of 2017. The massive iceberg was drifting dangerously close to the British overseas island this past month. Satellite images from the Copernicus Sentinel-1 mission and NASA's MODIS show A68D had broken off from the northernmost section of the main iceberg in mid-December. It has remained close to South Georgia, possibly because it hit a shallow seabed. A68D has an area of 144 square kilometers, or 54 square miles. On Tuesday, December 22nd, two new icebergs, called A68E and A68F, calved from A68A. A68E measures 655 square kilometers, or 252 square miles in size. A68F is smaller at 255 square kilometers, or 86 square miles in size, more than twice the size of Paris. The BBC reports that scientists are monitoring the iceberg to see if it gets stuck in the shallow waters off South Georgia. If this happens, it could threaten local wildlife by increasing the distance animals like seals and penguins have to travel to forage for food. Ongoing analysis shows that the keel of the iceberg, which was already considered thin for its size when it formed in 2017, has been growing even thinner, which possibly has facilitated the breakup. When it calved from Antarctica, the keel had an average thickness of 232 meters, or 760 feet, with the deepest section measuring 285 meters, about 935 feet. It is now around 32 meters, or 105 feet, thinner on average. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.